Hello, welcome back my fellow lifestyle enthusiasts. And if you're new, I'm Lene, and you should probably know that I am obsessed with all things lifestyle and how they impact your overall health. And as an aging well expert, my goal is to provide you with simple tactics to improve your lifestyle and thus improve your health and your well-being. So if you're into that kind of thing, then you have come to the right place. Today, we're going to discuss my take on fillers, and I aim to provide perspective that perhaps you haven't really heard before. This is part two of my two-part series, and if you missed my video on Botox, then I'm gonna link it for you over here, and I'll put it in the description box as well. And as a physician who sees patients in a medical day spa, new patients frequently ask me about Botox and fillers. And my goal in this video is not to convince you that you need them or that you have to try them. My objective really is to help you to understand their purpose so that you can talk more intelligently about what you prefer with your practitioner or with your friends. I want to help make the decision a little bit easier for you when you're considering your options and help you to make a more informed decision about what's best for you. I also feel that it's important for you to know as my YouTube family, what I personally do and how much I do and why I do it. <laughs> I've noticed that there's a lot of stigma with my generation and older women and men who feel that it's too vain to discuss their aging well practices. And I want to really stop this stigma about fillers and create this safe and open environment for us to discuss such things here. So keep an open mind and feel free to click that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. So let's talk needles. Have you ever watched a reality TV show and thought to yourself, she has way too much Botox? And perhaps you've even thought that the reason someone's face looks overdone is that they've had way too much filler. And I used to really think this way when I first started working in the medical aesthetics realm. I didn't realize that there really is a natural looking and very unnatural looking way to addressing the aging face. I also didn't realize that much of the overdone look that I see is a combination of surgical methods, implants, and too much filler. The truth is that we all want to age well. We all want to be educated on what we can do, but most of us don't really know what's working when it comes to aesthetics. Let's review the science of the aging face. In our 20s and 30s, our collagen formation slows significantly and we begin breaking down our collagen every year about one to 2%. In addition, we start to lose bone density and when this happens, we begin to lose the structure and the foundation that the overlying tissues are supported by. And to add to this fun, we have fat pads, both superficial and deep, that help to create volume in our face. However, as they shrink when we age, they start to slip and the supporting collagen fibers weaken over time. While we have 43 muscles in our face, these tend to strengthen over time while the collagen fibers of the cutaneous tissue actually start to weaken and this allows your muscles to pull your wrinkles into being. If you think of your face as the structures of your house, we have a foundation, supporting structures, drywall and exterior. Your bone structures are your foundation, your fat pads are the supporting and framing structures, your collagen rich tissue is the drywall and your skin or dermis is the paint and the rooftop. So as we address aging, we want to keep these four areas in mind and treat each area as indicated for the individual. Just like fixing your roof when you really need a new foundation is not going to provide the desired outcome, we must go to the root cause of aging when we are wanting to improve someone's overall appearance. I hope that makes sense. 
In addition to the four structures of the face, the foundation, the framing, the drywall and exterior, we also have four zones of the face. The upper face, the mid face, the lower face, the submentum and chin or neck area. And if we just treat one area of the face, let's say the upper face and neglect the other three, we run the risk of looking five to 10 years younger in one area of the face and our age in the other three. And this is how we unintentionally create the unnatural look. It's very important that with treating the face that we touch on all four areas if needed to create the most natural, refreshed and rejuvenated appearance. Oftentimes on reality, reality TV, we see the duck lips, the fish mouth, the monkey mouth as we call it, the cat face, and we are instantly turned off by the idea of fillers. And I don't blame you. I find these looks kind of unattractive and while I don't judge those who prefer these looks to a more natural appearance, it really isn't my personal taste. The beautiful thing about hyaluronic acid fillers is that your body produces hyaluronic acid. It's not a foreign substance that your body doesn't know what to do with. And with the case of an overdone face, it's usually accompanied by plastic sur surgery, facial implants, and too many fillers themselves. The history of fillers is interesting. Uh, they've been on the market since 2003 and there are some that are permanent and some that are temporary. I will only be speaking about temporary fillers as the risk is much lower and technically all hyaluronic acid fillers are reversible with an enzymatic injection. So if one hates them or there's a complication, this can be addressed. Fillers come in three different consistencies and include a Vaseline-like consistency, a jelly-like consistency, and a hot honey consistency. In addition to their consistency, each filler has a different affinity for water and a different performance and different flexibility. To determine which is best for you, we have to consider what we're trying to do and the outcomes that we want. For building up structures of the face and revitalizing signs of bone loss, we may use the Vaseline consistencies with very little, if any, affinity for water. We don't want these areas to move. For jelly consistencies with some affinity for water, we may want to plump up some of the tissues that have more laxity or deeper wrinkles of the face, such as the nasolabial folds around the mouth, or you may want to enhance any lost volume in the lips. The honey consistency is great for filling in fine lines around the mouth that prevent our lipstick from stain put or look like smoker's lines. Some fillers last about a year and some about six months, depending on the muscle activity in that particular area. Contrary to belief, the key to a more natural look is not determined by the amount of filler that is used, but rather the technique and the proper distribution when trying to remodel or renovate your house. For example, if you only fill deep lines and paint the outside of your home, you don't get to the root cause of your tired look. You have to create more false fat pads, as I call them, and rebuild your foundation to provide support for the overlying tissue. In the right artist's hands, you can apply a fair amount of filler and folks won't notice anything but that you look more rested and rejuvenated. Each syringe is only about one fifth of a teaspoon. Seriously, it's not that much. So when your injector is discussing using more than one syringe, don't be afraid that this is too much, especially if your injector is known for creating a more natural look with his or her patients. The big question is, what do I do? So for filler, I usually take between four and five syringes. In fact, 
you can plan on about a syringe per decade of life. So at 44, I take between four and a half to five syringes. I like the natural application of one syringe per cheek, half a syringe per nasolabial fold, one syringe in my lips because my lipstick no longer bleeds even though I had full lips to begin with, and one syringe for my what we call parenthesis lines. The great thing is that once the swelling goes down, really none of my friends or family really notice. It's really important that you do your research when finding an injector. Looking at Yelp reviews is such a good idea. Going on real self for recommended practitioners or making appointments with, for consults is really important for finding your match. So start slow. After all, this is an elective process. You can always add more as you dip your toe into the aesthetic waters. And if you're opposed to injectables, you can always look into facial acupuncture, PRPF injections, laser resurfacing, microneedling, ultrasound, PDO threads, and so much more. The options are so vast with new options continually occurring and coming up on the horizon. Congratulations. You made it through this video and I commend you for taking the time to educate yourself in the controversial world of injectables. Again, my goal in this video is not to convince you that you need them or that you must try them. I simply want to open up the conversation and to help people feel more comfortable when discussing their options. I want everyone to freely ask questions in an effort to properly decide what's best for them. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Your support means so much to me. If you have made it through the video thus far, I want to commend you, my friend. And please don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. If you found it beneficial, please share it with your friends. And as always, strive to supercharge your health and simplify your lifestyle. Until the next video, my friend, Mwah!